Algorand has arguably the best tech out of all blockchains out there. Better than Hashgraph, better than Avalanche, and even better than Cardano. But does that mean it's worth the hype? Well, to answer that question, I dove deep into the world of Algorand, and I want to share with you everything that I found. Specifically, there's three pros and three cons that are pretty important to understand. So let's dissect those, and then I'll end with my final verdict. But first, what is Algorand anyways? Well, it's a layer one blockchain that was founded in 2017 by award-winning MIT professor Silvio Micali. This guy's the real deal. He invented various techniques like zero-knowledge proofs and random functions that are used widely across the world of cryptography. They implemented his work into Algorand, and that culminated with their mainnet launch back in 2019. As you might expect, Algorand is super fast, cheap, and energy efficient. They boast speeds of 1,000 transactions per second and finality in less than 5 seconds. One core component that enables all this is their consensus mechanism called Pure Proof of Stake, or PPOS. Basically, they choose validators and block proposers from anyone who stakes, and they do so randomly and proportionally to the amount staked. The best part is that the minimum amount needed is just one algo, and that's currently worth around $1, so really anyone can participate. There's actually two types of participants in their system, relay nodes and participation nodes. Participation nodes are the ones that actually propose and vote on blocks, while relay nodes just route all the communication and messages across the network. It's pretty easy to run your own participation node, but you don't actually have to in order to receive block rewards. If you just hold Algo in their wallet, you can earn periodic rewards proportional to your stake. It's also worth noting that they don't have slashing penalties for misbehaving nodes, and it's essentially impossible to fork their blockchain due to how their consensus process works. As for their Algo coin, it's mainly for transaction fees on their network, staking to participate in consensus, and for governance purposes. There's a hard supply cap of 10 billion coins, and right now the circulating supply is around 6.5 billion. Well, that's Algren in a nutshell. Now let's turn to the good stuff, my thought-provoking pros and cons. But first, a quick shout out to our video sponsors, Covesting. Their platform is all about copy trading, which means you can check out hundreds of other traders utilizing various techniques and strategies and auto-copy their trades. Some of them get super high returns, while others less, of course. But their copy trading module makes it really easy for you to follow the ones you want. Everything is super transparent, so you can see exactly what trades they did in the past, their profit and loss results, etc. And if you are a pro trader, you can earn money from success fees if you get a lot of followers on their platform and are able to generate a profit with your trades. So whether you are a pro trader or a newbie who wants to follow people, Covesting may have something for you. If that sounds up your alley, go check them out using my link below. All right, pro number one is that they are super friendly to developers and builders. Like they support development in Rust, JavaScript, Java, Go, C++, and Python. That means that developers who want to build dApps can do so in their go-to language. They don't have to learn some strange new language like Solidity or Plutus to get started. Algorand also created their own smart contracts language called Teal, that's supposed to be more intuitive than others. One super interesting thing that I noticed is that Algorand is looking to attract teams from all sorts of industries to build on their platform. I'm talking supply chain, government, and even the environment. This is a notably different approach from other blockchains that niche down to support specific industries like just DeFi or just supply chain. The benefit with Algorand's approach is that their addressable market for their ecosystem is much larger because teams tackling a variety of problems can join. And to support them, there's the 250 million Algo grants program that they can apply for. All of these decisions to support builders has culminated in the number of Algorand ecosystem developers absolutely rocketing in the past year. Per Electric Capital's 2021 developer report, Algorand was number seven overall in terms of developer growth for ecosystems with over 50 devs. As for pro number two, it's that their platform supports a wide range of real world applications. It's not just crypto native stuff going on. They have things like Vital Pass, which is a blockchain based system to track vaccine passes around Latin America. B Next, which is a blockchain based remittance service that handles over $18 billion a year. And SIAE, a copyright management company that just launched 4 million NFTs on Algorand to represent the work of their creators. This is just a small sample of all the different use cases that Algorand supports. 
and it really speaks to their overall flexibility, design, and track record that all of these companies chose them instead of other platforms to build on. Specifically, their zero downtime ever and their unforkability may be difference makers for them. Those may seem trivial to you, but not having them could be deal breakers for certain business use cases. Finally, my pro number three is that they offer a decent solution to the infamous blockchain trilemma. Like for decentralization, the minimum stake required is tiny and the validator specs are among the cheapest of them all. For security, their two-step random and secret block proposal process is quite resistant to a slew of network attacks. And for scalability, the computation that the nodes have to do only takes like one microsecond to finish. So it's super fast and efficient compared to other consensus mechanisms out there. Now, of course, nothing is perfect and they do have a lot of stuff to work on too, like their storage bloat, their lack of incentives to run nodes, and their concentrated token distribution. I actually discovered a Reddit discussion about those trade-offs that was super illuminating and I highly recommend you read. I'll leave it in the description below, but my personal takeaway is that their trade-offs are manageable and none of them will require too drastic of changes to fix in the future. Give it a read yourself and let me know if you come to the same conclusions as I did. But in the meantime, let's move on to some cons, or rather concerns that I have about Algorand. Starting with con number one, that its token price may still be suffering from some previously unfriendly tokenomics. For a long time, they had a program called Accelerated Vesting, which essentially released Algo at a faster pace whenever the price went over a certain point. This had the effect of suppressing the price because as soon as it shot up, a lot of tokens would be released into circulation. That's why their market cap went up over 100x since inception, while their token price has stayed relatively flat. Now, this accelerated vesting program actually ended late last year, which was earlier than expected, but its ending hasn't really moved the price that much like many people were expecting, which makes sense to me because early backers are probably gonna take some time to realize their profits and sell to new long-term holders. They aren't going to dump their vested tokens right after they get them. After all, they got a massive cut, like 31% of the entire token supply was released via this program. I think it's reasonable to expect this inflationary pressure to still affect price action even after it has ended. Anyways, onto my con number two, that Algorand's growth strategy may be holding them back because they've been mostly focused on enterprise and government use cases, which reminds me a lot of Hedera Hashgraph or IBM Hyperledger. There's nothing inherently wrong about that, but it has largely come at the expense of the retail side of their ecosystem. Like there's only a handful of DeFi apps that you can play with, and their biggest one, Yieldly, has a measly $40 million in total value locked. One theory for this lack of retail dApps is that they do not support Solidity, so most of the popular Ethereum projects cannot easily migrate over. I don't really buy that argument though, because Solana doesn't support Solidity either, and yet their DeFi and NFT ecosystems are booming. So I think it's more likely that Algorand deliberately ignored retail use cases up to this point in favor of all the other use cases that you see on their website. But that's not good though, because I truly believe that retail interest is important for a project's success. Or else why not just be like Hyperledger and operate without a token? Now I have to point out that Algorand is starting to ramp up their DeFi and NFT efforts but they do have a ton of catching up to do and could stand to benefit from making those a priority moving forward. Last but not least, my con number three is that the Algorand team has left us in the dark on some important matters. Like first, they originally wrote in late 2020 that they would increase the throughput from 1,000 to 46,000 TPS in 2021. But 2021 has come and gone with no increase at all. And it seems like they decided to focus on state proofs instead but they didn't even tell us what happened to the old plan or why they switched priorities, if at all. Another area where I'd love more clarity on is the central bank digital currency projects that they are involved in. There's been a ton of rumors swirling around about this, and one of their representatives even shared that they were in discussions with 16 different CBDC initiatives. But besides that brief mention in a presentation, we've got no concrete explanation or confirmation from the team. We even saw the rumor mill go crazy about El Salvador's Bitcoin wallet being built on Algorand, which actually turned out to be false, but it was spreading like wildfire across social media, and the Algorand team didn't even put out a quick correction clearing that up for us. Look, all I'm asking for is a little more communication and clarity. That's it. 
But anyways, those are my pros and cons, and now it's time for my final verdict. I say they are worth the hype, and I give them an 8 out of 10 on my personal scale. After all, I do think their pros outweigh their cons. Specifically, I like their founder and their technology a ton. And I can see why Reddit loves this project. Even though the price of Algo hasn't really reflected their quality yet, I think it's only a matter of time until it starts to outperform. And maybe we'll even see an Algo season this year just like we saw a Sol, Luna, and AVAX season last year. Just FYI, I currently do not hold any Algo, but after doing this research, I kind of want to build out a small position for the long haul. Let me know what you think about all my points or if I got anything wrong. Just comment below so we can all take a look. By the way, these worth the hype videos are some of my most popular ones on this channel. So if you want to see more, here's one about Avalanche and its AVAX token. And here's another one about Phantom and his FTM token. Give those a watch, I'll see you next time, and cheers!